And we're live. You're live with Griff, everyone. Welcome. Today is what? Oh my gosh. Wednesday, August 26th, or like the one millionth day of quarantine. I'm your host, Kevin Griffin. I'm so glad you're here with me today. It's been a rough week. I'm, I'm pretty much going to say that much. Um, so not too much streaming, a lot of heads down work. I have a course I'm trying to wrap up right now on building APIs with ASP.NET Core. And it's taking a lot of time, a lot of energy. I finished recording on Friday, module five out of eight. So that's taking a bit of time. I spent Monday and Tuesday working on module six. Just recording in general takes a lot of time and effort. So in between my real work, which is consulting and training that I do, uh, trying to find time to stream is, you know, it's it's a balance game. Like, do I get paid or do I come hang out with all these awesome people? It's really hard to make that distinguishing um, <laughs> decision sometimes. But I'm live today because I actually have, I have something I need to spin my wheels on. And what better way to spin my wheels than with you all here live on the stream and I can actually probably charge some client time for this session. So yay, you're hanging out with me while I charge a client for my time. Um, all right, so let's just dive into it. Uh, if you're out there and you're lurking, just hit the, the lurk um, command. I should actually <laughs> wire that up to something. I'll do that one day. But here is what I am trying to do. Um, all right, where, where am I? I, I was setting up a sample and didn't get there. Uh, by the way, thanks to Mr. Jeff Blinkenberg for the host. Uh, so if you're watching from Jeff's stream, hi, welcome. Uh, if you're just tuning in, my name is Kevin Griffin. So my primary content is around ASP.NET Core. A lot of web development, a lot of Vue.js, TypeScript, and a lot of Microsoft Azure. So if you are interested in any of those things, give me a follow and I'll try to go live. Um, let me switch over to my screen, make sure that all works. Cool. All right, we're good. Uh, so I have this like really dumb, weird use case and it didn't just naturally work for me. <laughs> so uh, um, I need to spend a little bit of time on this. So I have this, I have this problem um, where, let me, let me bring up paint. So this is probably the best way to describe what I'm trying to do. So let's resize this to something like 19, let's just say 1920 by, what is it? Uh, what's, 1900 by what 1280 doesn't matter this part actually doesn't matter let's zoom out a little i just need a box so i am designing uh i have a header and i have a, a couple weird conditions for the header so on one side of the header there's a logo and that logo is 400 by 90. it's uh it's weird dimensions for a logo um and then in the middle I have this ad, so there's advertisements, and that's 728 by 90. Uh, and then there's this little like box on the side that says who you are, who you're logged in as, that sort of thing. Um, so the problem that I have, and, ah oh crap. So I, I drew, the, drew these, but I didn't think about it. Um, I need to think about I have a couple of resizing issues. Um, so the way we had this all set up before, it was kind of a house of cards, just the way the dimensions were. And the what should happen is the, the ad is centered on the screen or as centered as we can possibly get it. Uh, and the other things on the side um, are, are in fixed locations. So if the screen gets smaller, they stay where they are and the stuff in the middle is supposed to grow and, and shrink accordingly. But what happens if 
the screen shrinks below a certain size. So let's, let's use an exact, uh, come on. So let's say the actual screen shrink, and that's not gonna work, is it? Um, so let's say we're resizing the screen and there's not enough horizontal width for all three elements to this to be on the screen at the same time. Um, what we want is we actually want the middle uh, piece to collapse down. Uh, so we have logo and the little menu thing uh, and the middle piece drops down below it. So <laughs> this is one of those things that sounds good in theory, um, but I was just kind of spinning my wheels yesterday with some of the, how do you do this um, it, for real? <laughs> uh, so I decided maybe the best bet to go is kind of start from scratch. There's a lot, it's, a, it's an old project. Um, so we have a lot of competing styles and I'm like, let me just take a step back. Let me rethink this header with FlexGrid, something that can naturally solve this problem and see see how we go from there. Uh, so, I wanna do a couple things here. We're going to spec this out and hopefully that size looks good for everyone. I'm gonna bump the font up just a bit more for folks playing the home game. There we are. So inside of our header, we basically have uh, the logo. We have the ad and then we have the menu. And so inside of there, there's an image and the image source is, so I have a logo sample. Inside add, I'm going to have an add sample. And these are, all, uh, so these are sample just blocks and they're sized accordingly. So the nice thing is the logo and the ad will never change sizes. Uh, so then here, I'm just gonna do, all right. And I'm gonna fix the size of the menu to 200 pixels width. Um, it's not gonna grow, it's not gonna shrink. It should always be 200 pixels. Um, and that should do me well on even small devices because the logo is 400 and if that section is 200, so four or five, six, that's still under the 768 for an extra small device. Um, now, let's go ahead and let's open this up and a web browser so okay so yay there's my there's my bits and pieces now what I want to do is I'm actually going to create a new file we'll just call this style CSS and we'll link style.css okay and we'll open that off to the side so I was using this really cool tool. So Flex, or um, I call Flex Grid, Flexbox, same thing, right? It's all the same thing. Call it flex grid, flex box. I, I, you know, it doesn't matter. All right, so I found this tool, and this tool is really cool. Um, let me zoom. Let me zoom in a little on this. So you can basically say how many sections are going to be in your your container. Um, and so what did I figure it out yesterday? I figured out I wanted the middle to grow and to shrink. And I needed the three, one and two to be in a certain order. So 
But what should happen is, so there's two cases. So this is the first case. I'm actually gonna copy this and paste that into, um, in the VS Code. But then there's another case of where I need I need to actually swap the order and I want to push three down to the next row. Um, flex wrap? What does flex wrap do? Controls whether the flex container is single line or multi-line in the direction of the cross axis. All right, so I think the wrap is what I want. Flex start. Uh, line content. Align the flex containers lines with the flex container. All right, so this is logo. This is add. And this is menu. So, let's see. All right, so that's grow, shrink the basis self align whoa and line no, no I think I just want flex okay so let's go back and shoot over here so I'm going to call this container Oops. so header header then has flex items so I will add these in here separately all right I'm going to set menu All right, the menu width is going to be fixed at 200 pixels. That's what I figured. Um, I'm also going to set the background color of that to green. Okay. You know what? I'll set the height as well to 90 because why not? Everything else is 90. So there we go. This is. All right, this. There's my content. So if we take a look at a flex grid. Actually, I should probably be using Firefox to look at this because I think Firefox has a better flex. Um, or I say flex grid, flex box viewer. which I don't think is made into Chromium yet. So I'm using Edge, but Edge uses Chromium underneath the scenes. All right. Now I need this. So here's the problem I'm running into. Let's talk about this. So I have add um, text align center all right here's the problem so this is centered inside of its container so it's doing what it's supposed to be doing the problem I have is I don't necessarily want it centered inside of this container I want this more centered for the total width of the page you know what Here's something else I'm gonna do. I should have a reset. So padding is equal to zero. Margin is equal to zero. There we go. That's more realistic of what I'm dealing with like right now. So this, as it grow, as it shrinks, I hit this point here. So right here around 13. Actually, I thought I wrote that down. Let me see. 
Uh, no. All right, so around 13... Let's say 1330 pixels. I actually need it to... I want... So if it's less than 1330 pixels, I want this to actually move down to a second line. Um, we do already have a setup where once you get down to less than 992, uh, we hide the red block altogether because it's not necessary. Uh, but we want to keep it on the screen for a small period of time. Here's a thought I had. The thought I had was I should use a media query and the media query should do this. So how do you do? All right. So this is logo. Let's make sure that's right. Yep. So logo add and then menu. Okay. I don't have a ton of practice with media query. So media query means when, so if I say what, min height? How the crap do you do media query? <laughs> uh, CSS media query. Uh, screen and min width is What did I say, 1330 pixels? Okay. So, if the min width Actually, this should be max width, right? So, uh, screen and max width is 13. Actually, I just don't care if it's a screen. Just, just work. Here's what I want to do. So the default should be to flip these two. take a logo out of it. Logo doesn't need to change. But this one, ooh, I don't have an order. So zero, yep. One, two. But then we'll swap the order. This will become two and this one becomes one. Did I do that right? Okay. Yeah, okay. So, now, how do I get it? I need to change flex wrap to, well, hold on, flex wrap. Is it flex wrap? Actually, I think that's good. Okay. So if this becomes flex wrap, so let's change your little. So this becomes two and one. All right, so the add goes over there. When it does this, I need it to align to justify center. 
Nope. No. Mm. Oh, wrong one. Self align. Auto. What's the setting I'm looking for here? I think I thought it was justify content. Yeah, that's not what I want. I don't want center. Space between. I want space between. All right. So this becomes. see it all right so we wrap and then the header becomes space between there we go all right and then actually what happens is when this gets so low it just disappears um, so 768 We'll add this one in for fun. So media. Max width. All right, so if the max width is 768, oops. 768 pixels. Um, actually want the ad to disappear, so Display none. All right, so it's going to shrink so much, and then boom, it goes away. But everything else stays exactly what it's supposed to. This is awesome. Okay. And I think I have a min width already on the page itself. It is seven. Two hundred, four hundred, six hundred. Yep. So we'll say six fifty for good measure. All right. There we go. Yes. Yes. All right. Here's the other problem I have. All right. So I have this red box here. And that red box is seven hundred twenty-eight pixels across. Um. And it is center to its container. However, when it's in this mode, I want it, actually need to bring it over some. <laughs> so I don't want it centered to its container, I actually want it centered to the um, viewport. So, so I was thinking, if I do a margin left, you can't do a calculate in in here, can you? So, yeah, regular CSS doesn't have a calculate, does it? Does it? Did they add that to CSS? Let's see what Mozilla says. I think I'm on the right path with the margin. So, 
so. But I need to take... So the sorry, the add width is seven hundred twenty eight pixels. Um, uh, my wife's texting me. Find So the add width, I need to calculate. Hmm. So it's view. So view width divided by two. That's half of the screen. And I want to subtract add width divided by two. And then that should be at the negative margin. Let's fill in the blank. So 1920 divided by two minus <laughs> divided by two. Um, I suck at math, so let's, let's do our division. So that's 960 minus 278 divided by 2, 364. That's equal to 9 minus 364, uh, 596 pixels. Um, crap, that won't, that won't let me figure out the, the negative margin or, or I got another idea. If, what if that went away? Ooh, that was a bad idea. I can't just hide that, can I? can't just do a negative margin of 400 pixels, can I? Or 200 pixels. Would that be enough? So... Okay, okay. Uh, this actually might be on the right direction. And then in my media query... So the margin left back to zero because it's going to be a full full width. I appreciate you all hanging out with me while I'm talking through this process. Um, even though not, no one's really saying anything in chat, that's fine. Uh, I just appreciate being able to talk to the camera. And let's see if that works. Oh, yeah, it did. Oh, oh no, I have a problem. I have a problem right here. So I can't... Ah, uh, yeah, it's got to be a calculation because this like when it gets here it's going to over overlap the logo and I don't want that but that's still kind of like in the center isn't it huh is that so is that so that still looks centered don't it Let's uh, logo. Why, why does logo not have? Oh, 
Oh, because it's not a logo I'm looking at. I'm looking at add. So add should, yeah. Hey, W, uh, I am, so I am playing around. Here's the problem I have. All right, I have this, this flex, uh, flex box here. Uh, blue, red, green. And I have red that is centered align in its container, which is correct. So I have this container here. It's, it's centered in that container. The problem is I don't want it centered in its container. I want it centered. I want it centered in the, um, in the window. So, um, or in the viewport. So I need to f figure out the best way that works consistently to offset this. So I'm thinking just adjust the margin, adjust the margin. So it's centered in the viewport until, <laughs> until it shrinks down enough. So actually, so like that, as the viewport changes, there's going to be a, there's going to be a place here where oh, I need to adjust that just a little bit where it actually wraps down to the next line. And this needs to be just centered, um, centered in the viewport. Flex time, adjust content center, but I already have that. So that's, so like, that's fine here. That is not fine here where like it's centered, it's centered in its box, but I don't want it centered in its box. I actually want it centered based off of the viewport, not the, the item inside the item itself. Cause I'm already justifying the, the content. Yeah. So my theory was to offset the margin a little, but I can't just do, I can't just do a, a solid number. Um, cause that doesn't grow and shrink accordingly. What I was, well, set the width of your box. So the, what? So I have a, All right, I see what you're saying. Let me try that. All right, so let's take that out because I might not need that. Um, let me go up to the add. Let's take that away. So the width, the width actually is always going to be the same. Um, the width is going to be 728 pixels. Okay. Yeah, but that still doesn't fix the. Oh, but I have it set to grow or shrink accordingly. Um, uh, logo add. So I always need, I need this green box to be on the right side. That's why I had it the way I had it. So I had this center, the center would grow or shrink dependingly. And that would center the content inside of it because blue always needs to be where it is. And green always needs to be where it is. Um, so even if I set the width of, so I already have a, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I was wondering if I could do a calculation. Um, so 596, that's 
that's where it should start. Make the width of your menu the same as the width of your logo. But I don't need it to be that big though, Brian. And welcome, Brian. I'm glad you're here. Your ad will always be centered. But I don't need that much space for, like I could, like it could technically grow a little bit, but if I were to set that as 728, yeah, well, no, Brian, I see what you're saying. It's still not, it does fit, but it's actually not, but it's not centered. <laughs> it's, it's centered. It's not, yeah. Oh, you're saying set it the same. Oh, I'm sorry. I mis misunderstood uh, you. So let's. So you're saying this. Yep. Which this is 400. Okay. I get what you're saying, Brian. And that actually makes a ton of sense. All right. So now. And I think I could do that. I could get away with that. That works. Um, so even though I don't need all that space, I don't have to use all that space either. So that's, that works. Now let's talk about when this shrinks. So I need to, that's actually the other problem is I didn't want this to collapse down until much later. Thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. Giorgio. Yeah. So right there, like that's where I have it fall down. So by 1530 pixels is where that happens. Would I like that? Oh, because I didn't change the width. I'm gonna go change the width of the ad. So the ad stays the same. Menu needs to be 400. This is Brian's recommendation. Um, ad stays the same. I don't know. Like I, I like I feel like. Now I'm gonna get some, I'm gonna get pushback on that, I think, because it's still such a wide browser. I feel this needs to be, this needs to be half of, ooh, thought. What if we put this back to 200 where I had it, but the ad, What if I add the mar add it to the right of the margin? So that's a, that's a big that's a big margin. Okay. What did I have this before? I had this at thirteen. Um. Ah, no, I still need to calculate. Um.
meaning to the naked eye will no one will tell you it's yeah but the so it actually is thrown off by another thing like the so it's a weird client requirement the menu is not even going to be like the space we have is 400 pixels but the actual menu logo itself isn't going to be 400 pixels it's going to be like 200 pixels they want to leave all this white space reserved um for quote future use <laughs> so it's like so uh, this so i this has to be what it is the ad has to be what it is i do have flexibility with this the menu the green section um the problem is there I need I need at this point for so when like right here where red bumps up against blue that's fine it would be great at this point if green would shrink Maybe not even that. Hold on. So add. Oh, I still have that crazy margin. Let me take that margin off for now. Oh, I already did. All right. So I have crazy margin on. I need to figure. I need to play with that. Um, the break point. So that's. All right, so that's good. All right, go away. That's good as it collapses and then it'll disappear eventually. All right, so now we're, where are we? we're just trying to fine tune it here. Actually, you know what? Like this is fine. The point it becomes unfine, or I'm gonna get pushback. Y'all deal with picky clients. This is picky client. <laughs> so I'm trying to anticipate what am I gonna get pushback on. And so if we did this, they would say, we need the red, <laughs> like this is literally quote what they would say. We need the red section to come over 20 pixels. I would go, really? Or 200 pixels, whatever it is. Um, so if I put a, a negative margin on this. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Like they would say, oh, that looks good. That looks good. Um, but then that becomes a problem as you shrink. Add another div that floats the ad over the existing header and center it. Uh, I see what you're saying. Hold on. All right, <laughs> wind out, <laughs> get commit. Um, all right, let's try that. So, so basically we take add out. All right, let's reformat this. So. not a flex item we'll make that just the ad by itself so I'll take that up for a moment two uh, let's look at this without ad 
All right, then I need that to justify space between. So it's actually just this content. All right, so I'm taking out wrap, I'm taking out justify, and I'm replacing those. Okay. Eh. And then I believe Brian's suggestion was let's take this add, which right now. Oh, it's because that is still a uh, we'll hold up now. Uh, let me take out all this media query crap. still showing up oh because it's in the flex container i'd reckon for this to work it can't be in the flex container right so all right add needs to be by itself Ooh. why why did that do that Oh, oh, because when I commented it, I already had comments in there. Let's just remove that. This is why we have Git. Because if I don't like it, I can always. All right. So then add is not with 720. It's actually with 100%. And wow, hold up. Well, that didn't work. Uh, it's because I set the width. Yeah. Let's get, check out everything. Let's undo that. Okay, all right. Let's go with that, Brian. And let's say we hit this point where we're at 1550 pixels. Blue can't shrink, red can't shrink, green can't shrink. Um, so if that were to happen, Let's take the menu, which is the third item. And it's not order, it's flex. I forgot what the order is. It's, it can shrink, it can grow. Is that how that goes? I don't care about alignment. Oh, 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 okay. Okay, that's, that's actually acceptable. big is it right around here 226 pixels and then you have a typo where do I have a typo in my CSS uh, pointed out to me oh 11 ah, okay 85 oh line 85 oh was it the 11 okay 
That's it. Got it. All right. You know what, Brian? I like that. All right. Thank you for making me come back to that. I think that's that's working much better. Um, because once we hit this, uh, it's, it's never actually going to physically let you get that small. Because I forgot what we set our max width as. Um, max width 800. All right. Hey! Thanks for the host, C Sharp Fritz. You know, it's funny. I had the pleasure of hanging out with uh, Mr. Fritz last night. I spoke at the Tulsa.net users group online. That's uh, hosted by Sean Weitzel. Um, code with Sean. If you haven't, so code with Sean. He might, he might be watching and just lurking, uh, but. Sean hosted me at the Tulsa.net group last night. I talked about Azure static web apps, which I think are amazing. Um, amazing new feature to Microsoft Azure. And afterwards, we had a little bit of a happy hour, and Jeff Fritz came in to hang out with us. And so, most likely, if you're watching me, you are also watching C Sharp Fritz, which you should be because uh, Fritz has a great stream. Um, and why I'm doing shout outs because he helped me so much. Mr. Brian Lagunas, you should go follow all these fine gentlemen on the Twitch, but Brian, I think, I think this is going to work out really well. Okay. I'm, I'm happy with this. And I think once we get to this spot, so let's say we get to 800. Well, it's 400 plus 400, so it's 800 pixels, less than 800 pixels. Um, and I'll clean all this up later. It actually does the same thing. Actually, and this is child, nope, child three. Um, Lunchtime. Got to go. Well, enjoy your lunch, Brian. Thanks for hanging out and thanks for for chiming in. You helped me get over a mental block there. All right, add menu. All right, so here we go. So flex here should be grow and shrink, grow and shrink, grow and shrink. I broke something. What did I break? Oh, no, no, no. That's fine. So it gets to this point. It will shrink, 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 shrink. And then it adjusts down. Um, technically. Yep. At 330 or 1330. Yeah. So 1330, it wraps. Nope. So this should this should have been zeros. Nope, that part was right. That part is right until. So at 800 pixels, actually what we'll do is 805, we'll give ourselves some leeway. This technically becomes, shrink. Oh, that didn't work. Because I set I set the width on it, so I need to unset the width. Mm -hmm. I will 
we'll say, well, if I say min width, max width. So max width is 400. No, no, I want to leave width. Um, so when you get to this point, we actually don't want it to be ID menu. <laughs> so the fun part is I actually get, I'm there, then I get to take it and actually put it into the application and see how that works. You know what, we'll just set with the 100%. Will that work? Is changing the order okay hmm <laughs> That makes that makes sense. All right, why does it jump from To jump from 400 width to 796 width. I don't have anything in here that's overriding. Oh, I have multiple query, media queries. I should have done this in reverse. I should have done with min width and built up to something. So, yeah, yep, that's what I did wrong. This is why they call it mobile first, right? Mobile, mobile first says, let's reverse these. So, we should always just, all right, so let's, let's work our way backwards. The ad should be display none by default until min width is 768 yep then we display the ad yep disappears cool all right so then we work our way backwards min width of 105 min width out of order let me let me put these back in some sort of order all right min width min width min width okay there okay 
So what we need to do is we need to determine our defaults and work our way backwards. So let me split this page, split down. Okay, so let's go to the top here. I should have did this. I should have done this backwards, but I didn't. All right, I can fix it. Uh, mobile first, so we should work from the smallest and work our way up to the biggest. All right. Luckily, nothing changes in header. Oops. So the default for the smallest item should be, let me find, all right, so flex width for three. Justify. All right, so then this part goes away. All right, then flex item two. Which is exactly the same. So Let's leave that, let's take that out. Then for three, three will grow. This is <laughs> why we do get. Um, all right, I screwed that up. Let's do a check out of style. Okay. Yep, don't save. We don't want any of those changes. Style, copy of style. this that's what we had before but we need to do this in reverse order okay so let me look at my breakpoints so my breakpoints are 768 then it's 805 and then it's 3.30. I have 5.50 in here as well. So start from the beginning and we'll work our way up. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to delete these 
and what we'll do is we'll actually start from the smallest. So the default should be everything that happens when we are at uh, 768, which is just add. So add display none. Okay. All right, so add display none. The third flexbox item should be this. to grows and shrinks. Oh, oh, I screwed that up. Screwed that up. Oh, but header should be justified. There we are. All right. So, still have a problem, don't I? Why? Alright. Why does... the flex container all right so the flex container shrinks right logo is fixed size 400 add is gone it's disappeared menu Where's my computed? There it is. <laughs> All right, so what I understand is why, so the green box has a width of 400 pixels. That is not 400 pixels. That's 790 something pixels. 798 pixels. Grow, shrink. What's basis? What, what the heck does basis mean? Oh, maybe at that point, flex wrap should be no wrap. Right? There we go. Okay. It's really hard debugging in such a small window. Uh, and that is shrinking accordingly. And then it hits, yep, then it hits the max, the min width. All right. All right. Well, now. 
let's start adding some stuff back. <laughs> All right, this is the good initial version. Let me let me take some of this out. So add, yep, logo, header, add menu. All right, I'm going to clean some of this up real fast. Uh, I'd rather this be an ID. So I'll say ID of add. This will be ID of logo. ID of menu. That way I'm consistent with all my naming. Um, logo doesn't have anything. So we'll put logo in there for good measure, but yeah, it's going to empty rule set. Mm -hmm. All right, whatever. Okay. Yep. All right, let's work backwards. So media min width of 768 pixels when that happens with the add the show back up At the same time, I need I need to change header. So header will then become Oh, so I said I said no wrap. This should become a wrap. Yes! Yes, 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 yes. So, oh my gosh. No, 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 no. All right. These media queries are... <laughs> Finicky. All right. So I said 768. That's probably not where it should happen. It should probably happen at 805. So, oh, well, hold on. How big is so seven? Say seven hundred thirty pixels. gonna make that 800 pixels because for some weird reason once it got once it gets below and you have wrap turned on it wants to wrap that even though you're telling it hey shrink shrink this container it's like does flexbox have a minimum shrink Oh, uh, hold on. This actually says if you take the menu, you set min 
width zero, max width zero. Oh, see, that's not what I want to do. I did it in the wrong thing. Let's go up to menu. What if I made this 768 now? 768. Yeah, it still does it. All right. All right. Thought. What if I make max width um, 400 pixels? See, it still does it. Ah. Ooh. Now it still does it. All right, I'm going to take this garbage out. Not necessary. Not necessary at all. No, stop. Okay. So we'll set this. Oh, stop it. Refreshed the wrong page. All right, there it is. All right. So at 805, the ad disappears, but everything else shrinks to till we hit our minimum. That's fine. Um. All right. So as we grow. So once we start growing, we want the menu to stop. Ooh, that's not that's not right. Oh, so this is order wait. Order one. Yep. That's correct. And then it hits this point where, it, so that's at 15, we're gonna say 1550. All right, media, min width of 1550 pixels. When this happens, we then want We want item three. We just want the order to change. Oh, and I I need to fix this. So this should be two, two, not one, two, two, two. We need element two to be one, one, one. I just realized I, I did that wrong and the browser should have corrected me. All right, so actually I need to do less than that. I need to do at 15. Well, hold on. So at four, five, six hundred. Well, what's the... No. Oh. Um, hold on. 400 pixels on the left. 400 pixels on the right. 428. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Then we do that. It's centered. It 
considered on the page. Still, yeah, still more centered than it would have been. All right. I think, I think this is good as I'm going to get today. So now I have to actually go implement this in the, the client project, but I'm not going to make you all sit through that. I'm probably not supposed to do that anyway. So we're not, we're not going to worry about that. Yep. And then it hits there and it's, yeah, yeah, that's what I like to see. So cool. Huge thanks to Brian Lagunas for, for giving me the tip here of to expanding the width of the green box. Um, I still don't know if I, I'm, I'm going to stick with that and we'll just, we'll just deal. Actually, I think that saves us in some other, other portions, but I believe this works the way I want it to. Um, and that will shrink. That's all going to be good. All right. Yep. I'm happy with that. Yep. All right. Now, hit status, get add, hit commit. Uh, I don't have a place to push that right now. That's okay. But it works. Um, cool. So how are you doing, chat? I I think I need to change things up. up. I'm not quite done streaming for today. I feel like I want to stream for another hour or so, but I need something to work on. What should I work on? Um, uh, all right, let me do a quick check of things that don't matter to you all. All right, work on that later. All right, well, I have a couple other small things to do. So let's close that, let's close that, close that, and that, and that. Don't need that anymore. This is my favorite part of a project. You just get to close all the windows because you don't need them. That would have been unnecessary. Um, okay. So uh, I have another project I'm working on. Let me bring up my notion on another screen. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I have a thing I am working on called supercharge your ASP.NET Core applications. Um, and the first little demo in that is actually called uh, health checks. So. Let me change my stream information. Um, there we go. Change my title to the stream. Hopefully that updates in a second. All right. Actually, I haven't started this work yet, so I'm going to create a new directory. We'll call it supercharge ASP net core. We're going to create a new Git repo. This is actually going to be publicly accessible. So you get to hang out with me in chat. Create a new repo. We'll call it supercharge ASP net core uh, none of that so 
copy, paste, get push, you origin, master. What are you talking about? Oh, there's nothing to push. Duh. Um, uh, let's add something. readme.md Okay. There we go. And we'll push that up. So this will be live on the GitHub if you're interested. I actually have 10 demos I want to do. I have nine demos I want to do. <laughs> uh, why? Where's that? Did I push it? Oh, I forgot to push upstream. Upstream. There we go. So first things first, I want to make a new directory. We'll call this one. Uh, health checks. Oops. Done and new web app. Right. Open this in VS Code. Uh, oh, the other thing I should do is I should add a git ignore. Git ignore. If you've never seen this tool before, git ignore.io is one of my favorites. Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, C Sharp, ASP.NET Core. Creates this great little file for you. So we can save that. Uh, now, if I come in here and say, all right, status, add. Now let's do get status. It's not including things like my, my, my bin folder and whatnot. So, all right, that's all nice and useful. Let's close that, close that. Now it's been a while since I've done this, so let me add health checks. Let's go to the documentation. checks this has changed since last time I've done it last time I did with was with ASP.NET Core 2 create a folder we'll call this uh, health checks inside of that we'll just do sir um, his website up check and was it implement I health check Go ahead and implement it. So 
So what's cool about health checks is first they're, they're asynchronous when they run, but So I'm going to do a test here. So we'll say um, var consult with group.com. Pretty sure that this can take uh, HTTP client. Uh, crap, I don't remember how to do this. Um, let's duplicate our tab. If you need an HTTP client, you should inject your HTTP clients. And they changed how to do that. Okay, yep. You inject your HTTP client. And then this gets added as a that's not what I want. Oh. Create a field, yep, that's fine. But then over in startup you need to Add HTTP client, yeah. And that should give you an HTTP client when it loads. So what we do is with the client, we'll just make a request to the URL. Um, it's equal to await. Async. All right. If response. Uh, I don't want to do that because what you do is is success status code. You return new. Health check result dot healthy. something smarter here. Diagnostics has a stopwatch. So right, that's in diagnostics. Start the stopwatch. So it lapsed. This is less than, so we'll say 2,000 seconds. Um, so 
So then we'll do else if. Health check result degraded. Else, return, health check, result, dot, unhealthy. Not responding appropriately. Yeah, correctly. Okay, so. Uh, technically, I don't need that last else. Let's clean that up. I can come back over the startup and where I add my health checks, I can add I guess I want async check. I'm not quite sure what the difference between add check and add async check are. Not a problem. Let's run this. Yep, .NET Core. It's all good. technically one five thousand and if I do slash health um, unable to resolve oh, I did that wrong I must have did that wrong I did that wrong. There we go. That should work now. Healthy. Okay. Uh, and I don't have a way of testing if it's unhealthy because I'm not going to take my website down just for this. Um, do I have a site I could take down? Maybe. We head over to my Azure portal real fast. Actually, I do have a test site I can, I can take up. No, you cannot do that, can you? All right, we might have a problem. So the demo works, but the demo actually works too well because I can't test the one condition. And I'm not gonna go through the problem of... Oh, so that just returns healthy. Um, but I technically want it to return JSON result. And there's a way to do that. Um, require host, I like that. Require authorization.
<sighs> Excuse me. Liveliness. That's interesting. It's easy to go deep into this, isn't it? Distribute a healthy check library. That's technically going to be demo one. Oh, I don't want to go any deeper. Actually, man, this is interesting because I love it when you have one topic. Like health checks is a topic. But this topic, let's imagine you were trying to write a blog post about it or an article about it. You wouldn't write. You, you don't want to write all this. There's a lot of information here. What you do is you actually bump this down into a separate post and they ask questions like, well, what if I want to uh, change? What if I want to add authorization to my health check? That's a post. Um, even though it boils down to this little documentation call, you have to kind of build the story and then you walk through a real example. Um, like require authorization is fine, but what if you have different author authorization policies? What if there's a policy for just normal users and then there's a policy for administrators? You should talk about that. Uh, this is actually something I need to do in one of my client apps because uh, just so many things that can possibly go down. Do, 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 do. Oh man. All right. So actually I think this demo I have here is good enough. Um, because I'm going to write a short article to go along with it. Oh, man, there's so much content here though. Someone wrote an amazing uh, ASP.NET Core health checks. Um, there was one for Hangfire. I forgot who it was that created it. Hey, we have a raid coming in from Freestyle Coder. Hey, Chris, how you doing, bud? Glad you could make it. Hope your stream went all right. What'd you work on today? Raid! What'd you work on today, Chris? Hope 
Hopefully something interesting. Actually, I got the notification you went live, but I guess that, that was an hour ago, so you did your hour. F sharp. My oh, man. I you know, I have never given F sharp enough due diligence to to do anything like worthwhile with it. Um I wish I had. Actually, there's a bunch of stuff I want to, I want to experiment with, and I just haven't given the time of day to. I need to schedule, maybe like a, like a month of something that's not C sharp, um, arbitrary length data types. Good times. I remember it was a MVP summit a couple of years ago, maybe like two or three years ago, and they did that last day workshop, and I made it a point to hang out at the F sharp table. And I did some F sharp. Like I worked through a couple of basic examples and it was cool. Cause there were members of the F sharp team there. There were F sharp MVPs and it's just, it was a good time kind of hanging out with them. I actually don't think F sharp would be the language that I dedicate like a good amount of stream time to myself. Um, I'm thinking, here's my thought is, that when I dedicate time to a new tech, I'm thinking about Elixir. I think Elixir is going to be the thing that I do next. Um, so, uh, auto mod, what are you doing? All right, I'm going to ignore that. So yeah, I think Elixir, because I've, I've talked to enough people that do Elixir full time. They're like, oh, it does all this really cool stuff. I'm like, oh. I want to spend time with Elixir. Maybe that's what I got to do. I have a couple of little dumb ideas that I want to work on. And I think Elixir might be, might be my new toy, my next toy. So, but everyone coming over from Chris's stream. Hi, I'm so glad you can make it. Uh, and anyone just tuning in recently, let me introduce myself. My name is Kevin Griffin. I'm a Microsoft MVP. My focus is writing ASP.NET Core and deploying to Microsoft Azure and everything in between. So I do a lot of web dev, I do a lot of C sharp. I don't do any F sharp as our discussion just talked about, but uh, I always try to find interesting things for me to work on. And if you want to come along for a ride, I would greatly appreciate that. And if you're not already, like I don't, I, my bot doesn't spam enough. You should hit that follow button be uh, below my, pretty face and you'll get a notification whenever I go live in the future uh, and we'll have more fun. So I've been kind of on a streaming blackout lately just because uh, work like the, the quote real work that has to get done on a day to day basis. Um, so the stream this morning was dedicated to actually working through a client issue. So I just mocked it up and work through some of the, the issues I was having. Uh, Mr. Brian Lagunas was hanging out with me and helped me through a couple, gave me a couple of little ideas. So I appreciate Brian a ton for that. But we're actually, we're coming up on two hours. What time we are? All right, three, 320 on the East Coast in the United States. Let me just make sure nothing's blown up in my real job and it hasn't oh actually good news email potential client i love those emails hey kevin i would love to work with you let's set up a time because those usually end up in money and i love money money's great money 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 all right so i was talking about health checks built a very simple health checks demo here and so I'm actually writing a long form article that talks about health checks, why you would want to use them. And I want to go into some of the, the details. Um, I don't think I'm going to go much deeper into this. Um, because I don't need these articles to be terribly long. Um, so something like health checks is actually not just one article. It's like 15 articles that each cover a little topic and take something like the documentation and go deeper into it. But I think we're good here. So I'm gonna leave this one alone. 
Uh, and if anyone's interested, curious, so the t other topics that we're going to cover are things like. So what? Dun, 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 I'm going to have a section on App Insights. I'm going to have a section on background workers or background services. I'm going to do another one on controller, API controller. Five, I'm going to talk about content filtering. JSON versus. Uh, so content filtering means letting your API choose between JSON and XML, depending on the request coming in. There's a couple of little techniques for that. Actually just finished the video on it. So it's fresh in my mind. Uh, make directly directory number six. We're going to talk about signal R. I love signal R so much. Uh, and then number seven, we'll talk about JSON. So this is going to be the built-in JSON provider for .NET Core. Um, and actually jumping back and forth between the two. So if you want to use system.txt.json versus using newtonsoft.json, those are, um, two cases number eight we're going to talk about memory cache uh, i use memory cache in a couple of my applications where uh, so you have two types of cache and actually that's what number nine is as well the so number nine is going to be distributed cache so in distributed cache if you're running in a load balance scenario you might want to cache something that all the other instances in your load balance set have access to. Um, for memory cache, that might be something that you only want your current web server or application to, to know about. And, and there's pros and cons of both, uh, depending on what you're caching. And there is a number 10. Number 10 is actually not an article. It's more of uh, per, is professional services. So I go through this long list of here's all these things you can do to supercharge your ASP.NET Core apps. And uh, number 10 is, hey, you should just hire me because I can come in and do all this work for you. <laughs> it's a nice icing on the cake. So yeah, this is all gonna be good stuff. Alrighty then, for, what time is it? It is 3.30, almost 3.30. So, let me add this, push that up to GitHub. Uh, if any reason you want to see this, where did I put that GitHub repo? There it is. So here's the GitHub repo for you. I dropped it in chat. And I'm going to go through and add the other little demos to it later, but not right now. But you know what? It is 3.30. I've been streaming for about two hours. I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. So we need to find someone to raid ourselves. Uh, Chris Gardner has already knocked, knocked off. So you know what? Oh, Developer's Garage is live. This is Ryan. What is Ryan working on today? That should, yep, that should be coming through. Uh, he is learning ASP.NET Core. Let's do a little auth with ASP.NET Core. Okay. Well. Oh, nope. That's, so he's getting ready to raid Bald Bearded Builder. So we're not going to raid him if he's raiding someone else. Okay. Uh, Nick's Mad Science. What is Nick's Mad Science the talking about? Um, I gotta wait for these dumb ads. So if you haven't watched Nick's Mad Science, Nick is an up-and-coming developer. Uh, what's funny is he used to do a lot with video, uh, so video production. His stuff is really well done, just because he has that video production background. Um, man, stupid, stupid ads. Come on, come on. 
So I think we might send uh, Nick that's, that's the raid. Like Twitch. Uh, who else is you go live? On, I mean, I know. Like, Janus, you go on Twitter. Yeah, and you always like play Fall Guys. No, um, because there's so much. Code is still on. Just because, still just because on. there's so much Doom out there. Scrolling you know what? We're gonna we're gonna up. send everyone over yeah, to so, like, Nick's Mad Science. So if you've never raided cash, with me before, that, that uh, privilege that stuff to help people. Nick's Mad you know, Science. There we go. Are coming up making projects. All you need stuff. to do, um, Nick. I'm gonna turn you down a little. Head over to Nick. Say hi. If you're not following him, give him a follow. Just sit and watch for about five ten minutes and chat with him, and let him know you care. And with that, thank you all so much for hanging out with me. And I will see you all next time on the stream, whenever that is. And if you're not following me, hit the hit the heart below my uh, my body here. And I'll see you next time. Take care. So yeah, that's what's going on with me. Also, I ordered another pizza.